This is the fastest and most efficient way to analyze and interpret the results of reliability and validity using this software that is called Smart Peerless, from which you can benefit uh, for one month as a free trial. You can download it and install it into your laptop better than SPSS in this regard. To test the reliability and validity, we can go to new project and create new project. Let's type reliability and validity RV, create, and then we need to import the data. So here we can just import this data file that is in SPSS. You can have also the coded Excel format. Uh, so you can just open it. Once you open it, you can actually see the name of the questions or variables, their measurement level, be it metric, ordinal, or categorical, along with some descriptive statistics like the mean, minimum, or max, maximum, referring to uh, minimum and maximum values for detecting outliers. So here you can just uh, screen this data if you wish. So let's click import to import the data. So here it is, as you can see it, with the full values, the missing values, the mean score, the median, the minimum, maximum, observed minimum, observed maximum, standard deviation, among other descriptive statistics like kurtosis, conis, among others. So let's start analyzing the reliability and validity after screening the data. We can go back and then we go to this or this newly uh, imported file and create model. We choose model and we choose palest sim meaning partial list square structural equation modeling this is a recent approach especially in business and management research in terms of theory uh, confirmation and testing so here we call it reliability and validity click save before going to calculate we need to put the independent and dependent variables. In case we have mediators or moderators, we can add them. So we need to, to just draw our model visually speaking. So to do this, we have different questions in the questionnaire that form, let's say a composite score or a construct that we call IV or independent variable. So we can just drag and drop it here and click enter. Here it is, we can just align the indicators to the left. And let's pick the dependent variable items. So we can just control and then click uh, each, uh, let's say, indicator separately. And we can drag and drop it in this canvas and click enter. Now that we have these two constructs, we can connect them by drawing a line from the independent variable to the dependent variable to indicate that the IV has impact on the DV. That's what we need to test. So this model is called the measurement model because we want to test the relationship of these indicators with this construct, these indicators with this dependent variable construct, so to speak. To do this, we can just go to calculate. Here you can observe that the arrow uh come from the iv like from the construct or the latent variable to the indicator or observed variable so this model we call it what we call it so it is a reflective model since it is a reflective model we need to go to calculate and then we go to consistent palace same algorithm and then choose factor we keep this as default and click start calculation so here are the results. Here we can see the factor loadings. All these loadings should be equal to or greater than 0.7. So if they are below 0.7, they can be deleted or removed to improve the validity and the reliability of these constructs. So we can go to quality criteria to see the reliability and validity. So we can see construct reliability and we can have an overview. So the Cronbach's alpha reliability is 0 0.096, which is above the threshold level of 0 0.7. And here it is appearing in green, which is good. The same is true of composite reliability and even the average variance extracted that should be greater than 0 0.5. Here it is 0 0.782 for the first variable and the second variable. This is good. This means that the internal 
consistency or reliability is good. Now we move to the convergent validity. So as part of this uh, reliability analysis, you can find here average variance extracted. You see it? This one indicates a good convergent validity. This means that the items of the scale converge together to form a scale. So they can be combined to form a composite score, so to speak. So they are internally consistent. Then we need to see discriminant validity. Uh, it has three, let's say, criteria. We have the HTMT criteria, it has the foreigner lurker criterion, and the cross loadings. So we have this HTMT or heterotrait monotrait ratio of correlation or criterion, meaning difference and similarity. So we can see here this. A list you can find that the HTMT is a 0.8 so it's below 0.85 which is good then we have the Forna Larker criterion so these diagonal should be greater let's say horizontally and vertically with regard to the other values this can be achieved as you can see and then we can look at the cross loadings I said this should be uh, above 0.7 so all of them are above 0.7, which is good. This means that this, let's say, questionnaire or survey or scale is reliable and valid. We can even look at the collinearity statistics. The collinearity statistics should not be above a point, let's say, above a plus 3 or minus 3. Here, the, they are, let's say, beyond this range. So they appear in red. This means that there is this issue of multicollinearity or high correlation among the items. We can go to the residual correlations of the, let's say, outer model scores, as you can see, and we have the inner model scores. So we can go to the measurement model and we can find the correlation and what variables are highly correlated. We can use this control find functionality to find the items that are greater than uh, 0.8 Th this indicates high correlation so that we can remove them and improve the so-called collinearity we also have model fit indices like the chi-square nfi among others these are goodness of fit that we need to devote another video to and if you have questions or remarks do not hesitate to post them below and see you soon bye for now